necessarily reflect the opinions of the staff or management of Visionary Related Entertainment. Aloha and welcome to Betty's Real Estate Corner brought to you by Sakamoto Properties, Caldwell Banker, Sakamoto Properties, and today in the studio happens to be Casey Fukuda. Now, there's some of you out there that will remember Casey who lived here and worked with us at Sakamoto Properties for a lot of years, but he got a little independent and decided it was time for him to go back to where, well, actually, where his family was as they needed his assistance at the time. So he never sold his home here, moved back for how many years, Casey? I've been back for two years. No, but yeah. how long were you on the mainland? I was gone eight years. Eight years. Yeah. And uh, we all kept in touch always, but fortunately, he's back in Maui and has been for two years. Yes. And uh, it's been, we all got back together again, and it's been super. So he's going to be here with me today. We're going to talk about real estate, maybe a little bit about voting, getting people to really realize it's all about you. It's all about you. And if you vote and I vote, then it's all about us. Can I just say that uh, it's great to be back and great to be back on the radio show. Thank you very much, Betty, for allowing me to be a guest on your show again. I've been trying to get you on here for (laughs) two years. But he got too busy right away. Yeah, I had hot to get the shot, business going again. Hot shot realtor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been great. You have a, a new listing, too, that we want to be sure we don't forget to talk about. Yeah. So can, why don't we start it now, and then we can keep it going. That's great. Um, there's a property at the end of uh, Kanapali Shores Place in Mahina Hina, uh, ex- uh, Horikawai, excuse me, uh, called the Mahana. And uh, my new listing is uh, Mahana 305. Uh, it's a great direct oceanfront vacation rental property. It is actually zoned hotel, and so it will keep its uh, transient vacation uh, status uh, for a long time to come. Great, and great beach there. Great beach. Uh, this one's a unique property. It is one bedroom, but it has two full bathrooms, which is pretty rare at the Mahana. There's only maybe about 20 out of the 200 uh, units there that uh, have two bathrooms. That kind of makes it function as a two-bedroom in the vacation world because people who can't really afford a two-bedroom, if they end up with a one-bedroom, two-bath, everybody has privacy to sleep. Yes. So yes, yes, it yeah. does make a huge difference. There's a door to the hallway, uh, or to the bedroom, that gives you an ensuite bedroom, uh, just like a hotel room. And then on the other side of that door is the kitchen and a, uh, uh, a hide-a-bed couch. Right. So a second kind of uh, living area out there. And people get pretty clever about how they make that living area so that it's sleepable. Yes. But yours is spectacular. It's a great uh, property. It's got a really nice view. And the Mahana is a special place. Uh, the grounds and the, 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 the property itself, uh, tennis courts, uh, uh, ocean view, uh, swimming pool. And this particular unit is 856 square feet. It is uh, listed at $1,395,000. If you have questions about that or other properties on the west side, please give me a call, 808 264 five three six two perfect well I, we got that out and i think we want to mention it again in a little bit because it is a newer listing and it's it's already popular among realtors yes you know, casey and i as we got together today one of the things we talked about was the market and how everybody not everybody but a lot of people want us oh the market's slumping the market's crashing the market's whatever well i don't totally see it that way I understand why a lot of people do, but I think the whole thing is we've run out of listings, so surely things are not happening. A lot of the properties coming on the market right now are the ones that need work, and they're going to need a lot of work in order to get back up to standards. People have been renting them uh, short-term and or long-term, whatever it is, uh, all across Maui and Hawaii, but it's, it's a time that it's going to be hard. But I still think it's the market, and it is going to be. I mean, we are going to be across the nation in, let's call it a mini slump (laughs) or whatever we want to say. But again, I think for here in Hawaii, part of the thing is that we've just run out of inventory. 
but I think people will still be selling and people will be buying. We're still talking to people. We're making offers on things. So, again, talk to your favorite realtor. Call Casey at... 264-5362, Two six four five three six two, and of course that's an eight zero eight area code. Two six four five three six two, or call Betty eight zero eight eight seven zero seven zero six two. Casey is fabulous and um, perfect. Thank so, you very much, Betty. You, and you know what? I agree with what you say. Uh, we have seen a uh, reduction in uh, actual closings if you compare this year to last year, but. Our inventory levels are at record lows, and they seem to be shrinking even more every you month. Could, you can still yeah. only have so many closings yeah. if nothing's for sale. Right. You know, So that right. if you get down to, I, I can't remember the number, but 100 properties for sale in West Maui, let's say, there's not going to be 100 recordings or probably 50 right now. So I think it's hard. Well, that's a good segue into the stats that I brought oh, to the show Perfect. today. Um uh, Pre-pandemic, this is uh, three years ago in 2019, September of 2019, we are down 43% of the uh, single-family homes for sale on the market, which is over half. Mm -hmm. And then as far as condos, we're down 63%. So there is very little inventory out there. That's right. And again, we've sold more properties than anyone would have ever dreamed with. There's not a realtor, I don't think or a, a property owner that hasn't been thrilled, almost everyone, that the market went up as fast as it did. And sales have been huge. And interest rates made it all work pretty good, which gets us now onto the interest rate question, which still right now, interest rates are a lot higher than they were, especially for a 30-year fixed, but there still are uh, loans available for you with that are going to be adjustable that will be, let's say, 5% to 6%, mm-hmm. uh, probably fixed for six to eight years. And uh, hopefully by that time, interest will come down. But still, I mean, if you do even an interest-only loan, the odds are you can come up with a loan that you can afford. And rentals are so high that I don't think anybody should totally think, no, zero chance of buying. It's still a possibility. There's uh, rental uh, products out there, excuse me, um, uh, loan products out there called uh, ARMS. And the way they structure them is they have them a fixed rate, uh, a a pretty good fixed rate. And then after so many years, like the one I'm thinking of is a 7-1 ARM, uh, where the rate is fixed for seven years and right now i think that rate is about 5.35 mm-hmm. which is pretty good because yep. since everything else is you know getting to that seven percent rate and then uh, after seven years uh it uh then has an adjustable uh component of it and it will adjust based on the market uh for uh loans at that time in seven years from now but hopefully you could refinance at that time too. Absolutely. I mean, you just watch it closely. You know, you could possibly pay some points, but you know, mortgages also do go down in rate. We had an adjustable rate mortgage when we first got into buying real estate ourselves. And we never would have qualified at the time uh, if we were going for the perfect loan, but we were able to get an adjustable rate mortgage that was really good and get into real estate that way. It was interest only, so we weren't paying anything on principal. But again, even at that time, it was a great investment to be able to do that. So, you know, you talk to Casey as one who's really, really great with lenders, and he's been working closely with a couple of the Caldwell people. And um, give him your number again. If someone just wants to call you to get information on financing, you can get them directed. Yes, uh, please. Give me a call, 808-264-5362. I am a property investor. Uh, I had uh, six uh, rental properties at one point in time in my portfolio. And personally, I have refinanced uh, over a dozen times, maybe even 20 different times on different properties. So uh, I've got a lot of experience when it comes to how do you read your disclosures and and, uh, what are you actually going to pay for your 
uh, loan, and uh, and I can point you in the right direction to find a person that could loan you um, or get you a mortgage on a property today. Yeah, that is quite a. It's it's a totally different business than our business, and it's really important that you've hooked up with a lender that you understand and trust, and they can come up with some really amazing products for you that will make you able to buy. We're also hoping, Casey, don't you think, to come up that we're going to be seeing more and more and more housing, you know, for residents, that we're going to see workforce housing or you know, there's so many different names for it, but it does look like everybody is on board that we need more housing. I thought I saw a project uh, that's uh, going to be coming up. It's all supposed to be affordable and or workforce type housing uh, around the Kapalua Airport. Do you have you seen that? that well, that's uh, I think Pule Lehua is what they've named it, but I don't know that it's really ready. Okay, they ke- it, it keeps coming up and coming up. And uh, if Roy's listening to us, call us if you know anything. <laughs> call in. Call in. I don't know if you have the number, uh, which I don't think I'm going to give right now because it's too complicated. But uh, text me. My phone's on. So uh, that would be interesting to know. But I'm not sure. But I think there's so much. And politically, this year, we were just saying earlier, Casey and I were talking about voting, getting out the vote. Everybody has to vote this year. And if you think you don't know enough to vote, you probably do. Talk to family members. You know, if you see some sort of a political meeting, you you know, that you might go to to hear some candidates, although we're getting close to Election Day. But and maybe you don't feel qualified to vote on everything, but you probably are as qualified as anybody is. Yeah, um, uh, voting is going to be happening in a couple of weeks, and uh, if you aren't informed, you could go to your party website, and they'll give you recommendations on who you should vote for, who they recommend you vote for, Uh, but uh, I think it's worth your while to do a little bit of um, studying and find out what are the candidates' platforms they're standing on, what do they uh, want to uh, promote if they are elected, and uh, and see if they line up with your beliefs, and uh, and then get out there and uh, cast a ballot because we need everybody to vote. It's a very important uh, privilege uh, for being a person in our community. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I I know that there were times many many years ago when I was young, wondering the same thing: Should I be voting? I mean, am I smart enough to? Am I educated enough? Etc. And uh, it's it's a hard one. Well, I think but uh, we all are. I think if you look at the last few election cycles, your vote matters. They've Absolutely. been very close. Very close. Very close. Yeah. You know, Casey, Dr. Eston, Norm Eston, is on the line with us. And I think he's going to try to give us a little bit of information a- about what's going on virus wise or any change that we should all be paying a little bit of attention to. Are you there, Norm? I am. Good oh. afternoon, Betty and Roy and everybody out there. No Roy here. Um, That's Casey Fukuda. How you doing, Norm? Terrific. Well, aloha. Hi there. So, um, mostly good news out there. It's a gorgeous day. The trades are back. It's uh, less muggy. And uh, I think we're looking better uh, from the uh, coronavirus point of view as we get back to normal. Now, the, the pandemic... Uh, Acute phases are over, but uh, COVID is not. And uh, we don't expect this is going to go away totally for a while uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, It takes four to five years for a respiratory virus or infection to affect the entire population of the world so that there's immunity. And there's nothing we can do to change that. The vaccines help a lot from an individual point of view, but not from the world. And this is a great example of how we're all connected because these viruses spread in the air and well, we only have one atmosphere in the world. And uh, so a disease anywhere is a disease everywhere. And that's different uh, from something, let's say like Ebola, which is spread by direct contact or staff, which is spread by direct contact, respiratory viruses and bacteria and germs are in the air. So everybody's going to get to them. Well, Casey and I talked about, Norm, a little while ago, that what we need to all keep, keep our masks with us. 
I mean, if you go into a place where you've got a lot of people hacking and coughing, let's do it. Even if it's not just the virus, it could be the flu, it could be colds. Let's not catch things that we don't need to catch. Agreed. I think that's a great suggestion. That's part of uh, what we all need to do. I think, um, you know, the stages of going through this pandemic on an individual or uh, society level in terms of our response. First, we deny that it's real bad, and then we get anxious about it, and then we adjust to it, and then we kind of reevaluate it, and eventually we get to a new normal. We're not at the new normal yet. We're still in the kind of reevaluation phase where we don't really know what to do or how to treat strangers or, you know, what do you do in public? What do you do in a plane? And I think what we're going to wind up is uh, in public situations or in large crowded situations, I'll give an example, a grocery store uh, or Costco uh, or uh, a jetway as you get on and off a plane, it's going to be useful to have a mask on to prevent infections going both ways. And the more people that wear a mask, the better. And, this, again, it's not going to protect you in terms of immunity like a vaccine will or uh, gradually getting exposed to things. Well, but it's going to cut down on the possibility of, one, you're getting sick, or two, you're spreading this. So uh, this we've known before, and the experience dealing with the pandemic around the world has shown that. The other good news that we have is we can monitor things real well now, and there is a swarm of variants uh, of this Omicron virus on the way. We know that's happening. Every day there's another variant. They're not going to be real serious, but and the vaccine will help protect us against it, but not 100%. So we have to be prudent. We have to be careful. And if you haven't had the new bivalent booster yet, please, please get it. Even if you're not up to date on your boosters, just go straight to this one. Remember, it takes probably two weeks to kick in to give you full protection. So try to plan now as opposed to waiting until December. And the same thing for the flu shot uh, to help protect you. We live in a global environment, and again, we're dependent on people coming in on airplanes every day. We're going to get exposed to them. We're going to get exposed to whatever they're bringing in. So we have to protect ourselves. Perfect. Hey, Norm, I think we are going to get back to a tiny bit of real estate. I'm so happy you called in because Casey and I, just before the show started, right. I started saying, you know, I should have gotten Norm to call in. So it's perfect that you checked in with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Norm. Fantastic. Good to hear both of your voices. We'll talk to you soon. See you soon. Luna's Luna's coming up this weekend. Are they undefeated? Absolutely. (laughs) Thanks, Norm. Aloha. So I thought you had kind of had a couple of other listings that you were talking about, maybe... Uh, tossing out there. We, we have still one listing at uh, Pineapple Hill at 1010 Sunset Place listed at a million one, which is actually a great value, very private lot. Uh, homes around it have already been built, which is a good thing, and obviously at Kapalua. But again, 1010 Sunset Place, call Roy Sakamoto, 808-870-7060. Zero. I'd just like to mention um, uh, my good friend Elizabeth Quayle, who works at Coal Bank or Island Properties with us, has a listing on French Street, uh, 1133 Front. It's a great deal at $2 million, Well, actually, it's $1,995,000. And uh, a lot of room there. I actually have sat open house there, and uh, it's in a great location just off uh, downtown. Baby Beach. Yeah, right and around Baby the corner Beach. from Baby Beach. Yeah, yes. that has to sell quickly. Yeah. Because it's a perfect home for anybody. It's, uh, you could walk to Baby Beach. You could walk to every restaurant in Lahaina. It's, uh, and it's a great home. It's got a lot of space. And uh, it's a good home. Another uh, property listed by Cobalt Banker is 10 Puamana Place. Uh, I've sat open house at that property, too. It is actually uh, three units, uh, three opportunities for uh, income. It has a cottage, and it has a main home that's actually split up where there's a upstairs unit and a downstairs unit. Is that unit. actually legal? I, I have to wonder about that, frankly. Is it is I, that acceptable to have a... I think the main house ha- is a... It could be a nonconforming use because they did close off the um, uh, mm-hmm. the stairwell to okay. go up, up and downstairs. Yeah. But uh, currently it is... Uh, it's a great home. I know the home. But I'm not quite sure it's going to actually. But, you know, we can all figure that one out. Mm -hmm. 
So, and Elizabeth, not, that's not Elizabeth? No, or? that's uh, that's Ray Chin's list. Okay. Yeah. Let's get to Ray Chin and we'll find out the answer yes. to that. Yeah. And if he didn't put it in the listing, probably maybe it is. Okay. So again, you know, you had given me some information because you were doing some great researching on what's going on market-wise. So it really is an interesting time. But I, like, like you and I talked about, there's only so many listings. Yes. It does seem we do, st- uh, we're sh- so many visitors are here all the time. Yes. S- and they are still looking at properties and buying properties. It's, uh, it's going to be an interesting year. Well, Betty, I believe that uh, no matter what the economy is doing, there's always an underlying demand for real estate because of things that happen in people's lives. People get divorced. They get displaced. Uh, people pass away. Now, 1031 exchanges are pretty popular, too. So there's, a, there's this demand for people to buy. And when the uh, available inventory keeps shrinking like it has been, that's going to help keep the market propped up as far as values of your home. So You know, we've even seen people here that have lived in their home for a long time but are making a decision to rent their property for two years in order to be able to sell that particular property uh, as a 1031 and purchase mm-hmm. income property without ending up with a tax liability. Now, that means they also would have to be living somewhere else you know, whether that's a rental, et cetera, and those are difficult decisions to make. But I think we are seeing some very creative things. And again, talk to your realtor, who if you've got someone you've worked with, chat with them, uh, call one of us, call Casey, spit that number out again. (laughs) Phone number 808-264-5362. Thank you, Betty. And I do want to just mention that uh, this 1031 number that uh, we've been discussing in the last couple minutes, uh, it is a vehicle for an owner of a piece of property, and it needs to be an investment property that has the ability to sell it and purchase another property without having to pay capital gains on that transaction. That's why I'm saying people have made the decision recently to move Mm -hmm. out of their home rent it, put it in the rental market for two years, and I think it's two years that will qualify them for being able to utilize it then as a 1031. Yeah, and that uh, basically defers your uh, uh, capital gains tax, uh, but eventually when you do sell that property, Uncle Sam is going to want his capital gains taxes on it, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, now here's the thing. We're on Pule Lehua, which is the new property that Casey was mentioning, and Mm -hmm. it does look like it's going to be a go. You know, so he had heard heard that. I was behind on that. But Roy just got to me, and he's been following up on a lot of those things. So, again, that should be, I think it's, it's a variety of usage there, but I think it definitely will have enough product in it that will be considered to be workforce or you know, affordable housing. You there, know, we're down to, we have a two minute warning happening. Okay. Uh-huh. So we've got, if you can think of any one thing, you know, let's get it out there for people to um, think about. I, I think that um, uh, just real quick, if you are hesitant uh, to put your house on the market, or if you're hesitant to actually start looking for a piece of property right now, uh, there's two good reasons, for, or there are good reasons for you to uh, think about selling because right now our inventories are so low, you're, there's still a lot of value in your house. And then there are still some very good buys out there, even though the inventory levels are low. You just need to get a, get a good real estate agent to help you find that. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, think about it a lot. I think we'll have Danny Couch coming back on now, probably in 30 seconds. So it'll be fun to hear him. That, for me, he is my favorite Hawaiian singer, so love that he's, uh, that he's let us use this all these years. It's Betty, fun. thank you so much for inviting me on your show. Well, I now you're going to have to come again. Okay. Okay. It's been great to have Casey here. So call us. Aloha. Thanks, Betty. Aloha. Caldwell Banker. Kapalua. Aloha. <laughs>